Hi, I'm John Zarella. For decades, the Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral have been known affectionately as the Rocket Ranch. It's catchy. There's even a beer named after it, a Pilsner, and a book written about it. But the next couple of years might just be the most exciting time the ranch has seen since the days of Apollo. Four, three, two, one. When SpaceX launched its first Falcon Heavy rocket, more than 100,000 people came to witness the event. That was just the beginning. If schedules hold, which is never a sure thing, at least half a dozen new rockets will lift off from the ranch between 2020 and 2022. We have ignition of NASA's Space Launch System. The big boy of the bunch, NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. It's the most massive and muscled up rocket ever built. The first test flight could come at the end of next year. Exploration Mission 1 would send an uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon. There are other big boys coming too. United Launch Alliance is, with several partners, building the Vulcan. One of the selling points for Vulcan, and really all the new entrants, is cost savings over their predecessors. Vulcan will be substantially less expensive than Atlas, and at this point in a very highly competitive environment, I'm not gonna tell you just how much less. Mm -hmm. Vulcan will also be the launch vehicle for Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser spacecraft, which will carry cargo to the space station. In a throwback nod to the retired space shuttles, Dream Chaser is built as a space plane launching on Vulcan from Complex 41 and returning to land on the runway at KSC. T plus 10 seconds. Omega, Northrop Grumman's entry, is another of the large launch vehicles. It's being built with one primary customer in mind, the U.S. military. The Omega rocket is a three-stage rocket motor. Uh, the first stage would actually be two of these hooked together. And then a second stage is just a single one of these same segments and then a third stage on top of that. Omega's first and second stages are powered by solid rocket motors like the boosters used on the space shuttle. Now, all of these rockets are big ticket, being developed by major aerospace companies. But there are smaller commercial rocket makers that are right there step for step with the big guys. We can't forget SpaceX, not that founder Elon Musk would let us. SpaceX is building its Starship, which will go to the moon. And Blue Origin, founded by billionaire Jeff Bezos, is working on its heavy lift, New Glenn rocket. The New Glenn is being built at a rocket assembly plant within a few miles of the launch complex. 2021 is targeted for first flight. Now, all of these companies are pretty much household names in the space business. But how about Relativity Space? Heard of them? The company is 3D printing nearly every component of its rocket called Terran 1. If they pull it off, that could be a huge game changer in rocket development and launch costs. Or how about Firefly? Not the bug, the company. They've been running engine tests at their Texas facility. Firefly's Alpha rocket is smaller than the others and could start flying in 2021 from Launch Pad 20 at Cape Canaveral. The company's CEO is doing something beyond unusual. He's offering a free ride to space for a research payload. We're calling the Flight Opportunity Dedicated Research and Education Accelerator Mission, or Dream Payload. That's pretty cool. There's no guarantee all of these vehicles will eventually make it to the launch pad, but the fact so many are under development is a testament to the rapid growth of the commercial space business. There seems to be plenty of it to go around. So much so that within the next three years, there could be a launch a week from the Rocket Ranch. For my radar, I'm John Zarella. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.